Hello, hello, everybody. It is 3.18 a.m. Central Time on the 10th of September, 2018. It is Monday in the United States, going into near Tuesday internationally, and I hope you're doing well. We're here to do an update on the seismic situation that we're going through here in the West Pacific and across the entire Pacific as a whole. If you're not aware of what happened, a 7.0, 6.9 earthquake struck off the northeast shores of New Zealand or technically up in the Kermadex. Big earthquake, guys. 6.9, 7.0. That's on top of the 6.7 to 7.0 that struck earlier in the day, which they have now adjusted to 6.5. Well, we know it was a bigger quake, and they're doing this magnitude downgrade stuff. Um, well, we don't even want to get into that, but look at our spread of quakes today in the 5.0 and greater range over the last 48 hours, and then in the last 24 hours, a new 5 filled in right here in the middle. So we had a 5.7 and a 5.0 in the middle, and in between both spots, of course, uh, the both spots are the bigger earthquakes. Now we go down to the south, and in New Zealand, there was also activity on the North Island. So if you take a look at this, a new 4 has struck within the last hour and a half down in Wellington. Wellington slightly shook up a little bit, new 4.7 at the north tip of what we call the catcher's mitt here, and it kind of resembles a catcher's mitt, but it acts like one as well. Don't forget the 4.4 or 4.3 that struck at Topo Volcano, kicking this all off before this. Now, this right here, this big 7.0 earthquake, can be traced back. We, all we have to do is go back a few days, and we had our big, deep 8.0, 7.8 downgrade, or now they have it at 7.9. We'll just call it an 8 because that's what it was, a big, deep 8.0 earthquake down below the plate. Now this coming up underneath the plate like a giant bubble of pressure. I'm going to turn on a display capture now so you can see my mouse. This might help you just a little bit better. So let's do that. Okay, so here's our big bubble of pressure coming up underneath the plate. Now imagine this down below the plate, not above it. So a big bubble of pressure below the plate. And within the first 12 hours of this happening, South America got hit by a series of sixes. Now they went with 5.8 on either side, so let me get them on there there. On either side, we have a 6.2 in the middle, a 5.6 to the north, and a 5.8 to the south is what they ultimately came out with on the magnitude list. So first, this big guy happened over here on the West Pacific. Whoops. First, this big deep quake happened in the West Pacific, then followed within 12 hours South America moved. That's not where we stopped, that's just the first day. Since then, within the dome, look what happened, or within the bubble. Do you see? Our two other sevens are nestled in between. Now we can get that other six out of there, and we're looking for new activity to spread over to the west. Now that the movement has happened within the bubble of pressure, we're going to look for it to spread out to the other silent zones. Now there's other areas in between our current quakes. Do you see there's a middle point between our current 6.5 and our 4.6 and 4.4? Do you see where the rings overlap? Where the rings overlap is our middle fulcrum point. Force is going to flow across here, and it's going to go to the, this middle point here, and it should go right over here next to Lombok at the middle point here next to Java. So we have warnings going all the way across the West Pacific, then up to the north, same thing. Japan, look, Sakurajima is blowing its top over and over again, and you're sandwiched between Sakurajima and a series of earthquakes. Down to the south, a giant open silent zone now, but it was hit yesterday by a 4.5 USGS not reporting that quake. Over to the east next to Guam, same thing, big open silent zone. All these areas are going to be filled in with larger earthquake activity and nestled down between our quakes. So the points between the quakes, even if they're very small, or if they're extremely large, or if they even cover thousands of miles, the middle fulcrum point is what comes under pressure and releases. So again, the spots between our current sets of quakes are the spots where we watch for new activity to develop. So all that being said, new deep activity is popping up here in the West Pacific. 
We're waiting to see if a new earthquake is reported here. Tonga has reported in a near 5.0 earthquake. It may be bigger, but it looks like it's a deeper quake. So I don't know when that's going to be coming in on the feeds or if it's going to be coming in on the feeds. We have to wait and see. Down in New Zealand, next several days, what are we going to look for? I know a lot of New Zealanders are probably wondering, guys, with a 7 up to your north, it's a no-brainer that you're going to see this increase. You already have a 4.0 in Wellington, a 4.7 at the north tip of the North Island, with the whole South Island nada, nothing. Everything from the Cook Strait to the south is now gone. Quiet. That's not good. We don't want to see quiet when you have this up to your north. You want to see a release of equal-sized equal distribution of force across both islands. If it builds in one spot where it goes quiet, that's where you then look to the middle of for a new release to happen. But the middle of what? We have to go back just a few. Now, these are technically yesterday's quakes, but I want to go back to the five that happened down here two days ago. So if we go to the halfway point between this 5.0 and the earthquakes up here on the north part of the island, the halfway point brings us in right in here. So across the Canterbury uh, Mountains, I suppose, the mountain range, the northern or the southern Alps is what they call these down here, but the northern part of the southern Alps and then going up here right into the Cook Strait. That would be our halfway point. Let me turn down the ring so you can really see it. So we come down, around, over, and then this would be the halfway point. We come down, around to the end point. End point, halfway point, end point. Okay. And that's what we look for. And we watch for the next several days. Not only there, but over to the west. For my people in Indonesia. What more signs do you need that something's coming your way? Don't ignore what's coming your way. Now we go to the same thing. We go to the middle points between our quakes. Now there's something going on here in the middle. In Java, right now. Big blasts happening over at Krakatau going up 15,000 foot high now. Started with a few thousand foot high. Just small emissions a few weeks back. Then it just started going up to 1,000 foot and 2,000 foot and 4,000 foot. Now it's at 15,000 foot. Okay. Now also, same time that's going on, Semeru also erupting. So in the middle, we've got two volcanoes erupting. That's something to pay attention to. On either side, same size quakes within a few hairs of a point of one another. 4.8 to 5.0 on one side, 5.1, 5.0 on the other. Now this is just one of the quakes that was reported. There was another one that struck, a 4.5, which was also a 5.1 that they downgraded now. So we're going through a series of noteworthy sized earthquakes over the past several weeks. Now I'm going to show you something that I didn't show you before. We're going to look at the last 30 days of 4.5 and greater quakes to get a picture of what's really happened here in the last month since August 10th. Now you guys know August 9th that was my uh, wife's birthday. Now the only reason I, you guys might remember that is that's when this whole dang mess started. And ever since then, take a look at our, look. here's our 6.0s and greater in the last 30 days. Oh wait, we've got the 5.9s on there too, but that's okay because they did the down. Look, look at this. Look. This is, I mean, guys, look. I mean, how many times have I had to ever show this to you? I've never seen anything like this before, ever. Not even after the Japan quake. We've got our deep quakes, massive deep quakes. There's our big deep 8.2. There it is. And this one struck, here, let me get the date on that. August 19th is when the big deep 8.2 happened. Now don't forget, South America had its, it, its big 7.1 on, sorry, I'm trying to read the dates and talk at the same time. Uh, August 24th. Now we have our other new big deep quake, which is the 7.9, and that just hit four days ago. And these are the biggest, deepest quakes we've ever seen. So we've got something going on on both sides of the Pacific Plate down below in the asthenosphere, then spreading out from there. Look at it. Now we can take it down one more step and go look at the mid-range fives. Here's our mid-range fives and greater, or if we connect through. Now there's a few missing earthquakes in here. Here's our fives and greater. <laughs> look at this. Now you might say, oh, 30 days. Okay, well, let's look at the last two weeks then. Okay, do you see? So even if we take it down just two weeks, we go from here 
spreading out all the way up to Japan, all the way across to Europe, in a line following the plate boundaries with one lone quake on the Russian interior craton edge. And you see it, it's brown versus purple, or brown versus green, um, with right in the middle where a little purple ring is. Okay, so it's so obvious in two weeks' time, but if you really look in a month's time, it's absolute. Let me turn down the rings so you can get a better picture of where these struck. The earthquakes struck following the plate boundaries and craton edges, bar none. There is no randomness to the earthquakes at all. They are following the plate boundaries, which are the fractures in the plate that start at the surface and go all the way down into the asthenosphere, the magma down below the plate. There's not one random piece about this. Now let's go down to the fours and greater last 30 days. Oh wait, this is the 4.5 and greater feed. Let's go turn on our 2.5 and greater feed for the last 30 days to see the connection across the U.S. So you saw the 6.2 off the west coast, right? Let's wait for this. There we go. So there's the 6.2 off the west coast. Now take it down and out to the fours. You see the fours go interior to the plate, right? Now take it down to the threes. Boom. We connect across the United States. Take it down to the twos. Boom. Goes further over to the east and take it down all the way to the ones and past 30 days. Connects across the edge of the craton. Plain and simple. See? Edge of the craton. That's just in the United States. Sixes, fours, threes, twos across the plate. Now, where's the fives? Technically, one of those fours down in California. I'm still telling you guys it was it was something more like an upper 4 to 5.0 earthquake. Anyways, so that's the last 30 days. Now, again, it would slow us down on the globe to even look at the last 30 days of 2.0 and greater globally. But let's jump it back over and take one last look at this masterpiece of uh, seismic movement over the last 30 days. One more time. So we're going to look at the 5.0 and greater first, which is just, I mean, it's just such a mess that we can barely even see through. Taking it up to the sixes and greater, you can see they have struck all along the plate boundaries, going around the plates and on the craton edges. That's where they struck, even over in Iran. And following our arrows perfectly, by the way. So in succession from one another. So take a look at it. You won't get a look at something like this very often. I, you know, I might even take a screenshot of this uh, just for memory's sake of what this past 30 days has been. It has been phenomenal, and we're not done yet. The two most recent earthquakes are the ones marked in white. So it's starting over again. So the 8.2, one more time, take a look at the 8.2 that struck three and a half weeks ago, four weeks ago. This one on the 19, three and a half weeks ago. So that was the first beat of the drum that went around the plate. Second beat of the drum's happening now with the new big deep quake. So if you're down in New Zealand, I think you now understand what's going on. We've got major disturbance happening around the Pacific plate, and you're not the only ones that are getting hit here. Uh, just talk to the people over in Indonesia or talk to the people up in Japan. Hundreds of people killed over in Indonesia. Hundreds of people killed over in Japan. All kinds of people injured over in South America. This is all in the last few weeks. The United States has gotten kind of lucky on this, but you can see where our luck is running out. I mean, do you see the triangulated point between these three sets of quakes? Where do the three rings overlap? Do you see? So, I mean, technically you could say three rings overlap anywhere from the coast of Alaska all the way down here off to the coast of Haida Gwaii. That's where they all overlap, right here. Now, will it go further to the south? How about Mexico? You know, Mexico's earthquake-prone, right? Mexico normally gets hit with large earthquakes, right? What? Well, here's the last 30 days. Where are you? Same for South America, down in South Chile. You know, nor the largest earthquake in the world that struck here. The one that the largest in recorded history, I mean. 9.5 or whatever, back in 1960. So there's only a few spots left to be filled in across the whole Pacific plate. And that's no exaggeration. This is in 30 days. Now again, the deep earthquakes are raised high off the globe, so you can see all sides have moved. And again, these are the large quakes. We take it down to the 4.5s and greater, and you can really see it. Okay. It's amazing stuff to see real time before your eyes. Let's get back over to the seven day earthquake feed. Get out of the last 30, because this is just so much to look at and take one last look at what's current and what's currently happening. 
We're seeing a spread of quakes start out from our deep earthquake locations. The good news for everybody here is we now have a firm understanding about how this starts. So if you want to take a look at the screen here and I'm going to start this video and what I believe is happening down below the plate in the magma is this a series of concentric standing waves that form and they first curve down into a cone that goes down into the fluid or into the semi melted magma and then it rockets back up in a singularity or a spike where all the force of all the waves is forced in on a single point and it hammers up on the underside of the plate with new deep earthquakes but that's just the first part of this then it spreads out the waves then spread out inside of the fault zones or the plate boundaries in this case the, the cracks that go from the surface all the way down into the asthenosphere and they build very quickly and accumulate upon each other when they do the amplitude increases and we get what's called a standing wave that spreads out in a linear or a horizontal fashion so it starts with a hammering on the underside of the plate and then it comes up and spreads out like this and we get equal distance spacing on quakes as the standing wave builds in intensity across an entire region so make note of the equal distance spacing of the wave tops and then we come back over here and look at our earthquakes and they're doing the same thing we get the same spread of the same size quakes across a huge distance look 4.8 4.7 4.8 4.9 they're all within a hair of a point they're within a day and they're spread across an entire region in a line what more do we need the ha it also happens here where we get two large points here and here the two sevens and then on either side a five and a 4.6 or you could just say a five and a five so this would be like the wave going up and down right and the low point would be where the five is and the high point would be where the seven is and the low point would be where the five is and the high point would be where the seven is now just think about the distance on that that's four thousand miles or five thousand miles or so across going from north of going from the Kermit X all the way over to Papua New Guinea now what's that wavelength well we can determine that that's SLF super low frequency spreading out 1,000 to 10,000 kilometers 1,000 to 10,000 kilometers well that sounds to me like about 4,000 miles doesn't it and if it's spreading out four to three to four thousand miles or you know six to seven thousand kilometers or so that's SLF and SLF would be a super low frequency that's coming from inside the earth not to be confused with radio waves in the atmosphere so we're talking about something coming up from the core that hammers up on the underside of the plate first like this and then it spreads out thousands of miles in the course of hours to days dropping off earthquakes at the pinnacle points of the peaks that build in amplitude over the course of just a short period of time the more force that's involved the more it spreads out the more it drops off the earthquakes along the way and that's why we got the same size threes going all across the United States in the course of a day and a half time a standing wave formed across the edge of our North American Craton following down across the mountain ranges curling over to our drill points and then terminating over on the East Coast just an example one of many that I could give you of how this happens so when you see it happen and you see it happen in real time you shouldn't ignore it the people down in New Zealand do not ignore what is coming your way we hope it doesn't we hope it fans out we hope it dies out hope for the best but plan for the worst and do not be scared you need to be prepared 100% have your earthquake plans dusted off you know your earthquake veterans down here you guys are used to dealing with this why well look where you are you're right next to the regular hammer point on the northwest or on the west pacific that then pushes all the way to the northwest pacific and all the way down to the south pole so you're on the pinnacle of it and that's why you get hit regularly with normal moderate sized movement because the hammering here isn't usually that big but lately, instead of a regular hammer, we're talking about a sledgehammer has come in. Or even bigger, a wrecking ball has come in. They, you know, they, Using the hammer analogy isn't even good. If we're using normally a hammer and we're getting fours and fives, then we're talking about a wrecking ball coming in at eight and coming in and knocking the whole thing around. And that's kind of what's happened with the whole plate. That's why we've shifted the way it has, and it's not done moving yet. Now, if you want to get the full update on this, you can go over and check my update over on YouTube. Hold on. Hold on, guys. Hold on. 
New 5.3 has just been reported down here in South Chile. New 5.3 has just struck down in South Chile. Let's go get our information on this. Okay, uh, striking offshore of Coquim uh, Atacama, Chile. What's the time Time on this? 8 824 UTC. Within the last 10 minutes, a new 5 point something has just struck down here on the coast of Chile, guys. It may be bigger. Let's go check our latest data contributions. You guys come along with me here. Okay. Geophone Potsdam, let's go with their station. Oh, wow. Yeah, guys, look. 6.4, 5.8, 6.4. Lots of sixes on the list. We can throw out the fours. We can certainly throw out the fours. We would probably go with a mid-range five. Um, probably up to 5.7, 5.9. looks like a near six. Oh, look, they just downgrade. USGS just weighed in, of course. Of course, USGS is going to say 5.1. Um, you know, that's funny because they just put it, the other 5.1 over here, and this one was a 5.1. Yeah, guys, take all your sixes down to 5.1s. That'll, that'll stop Dutch Sins. That'll, that's a good way to stop me, right? No, we're all sitting here, like, making fun of you guys in chat room, don't you know? Um, all right, well, here we go. Uh, new near six as struck. Just showed you the station list. You don't have to take my word for it. We'll see what they come in with on the ultimate magnitude on this, but there you go. So now we got the same sized earthquake that we've got up here, down here. Do you see? Both tips of both arrows, boom, boom, boom. Same size force distributing itself out across the plate. Now, is this going into... No, no, no. It's on the shores of Chile. I was going to say, if it actually struck here in... Um, Argentina, that would be a direct earthquake forecast. It hey, they just took it down to 4.9. Keep going, guys. Keep going. I'm gonna print it on a t shirt and we'll send it to you too. I'll send it in, in 5XL. Okay, uh, what else? That's it. Okay, that's all we have for right now. For everybody else over in Europe, just in case you don't know, we're watching for activity to come across Asia in the next several days. So we're looking for activity of a, a noteworthy size to be striking here across the West Pacific. And I'm going to name out Nepal as our spot where we're really concerned if a 5.7 is incoming. So you were sandwiched between two sets of fives. Do you see that? So here's a 5.5 here, and here's a 5.6 here. If you take those and add them together, it equals 5.75. So the middle point, if you come up and around the bend, comes in right here into Nepal. So I want the people in Nepal and North India, uh, South China, Southwest China. You guys need to be on watch. Look, I mean, you're already sandwiched between points. You've already got a little movement going on in North India. So please be ready. Same for over to the west in Iran, east of Tehran, southeast of the Caspian Sea. And we're going, back, oh, by the way, 6.0 or near 6, upper 5 is due there. And then a uh, five or an upper four is due between Crete and Cyprus. Uh, this past time we got a swarm, so we got a little lucky, but the swarm is right at the spot where we have our warning going. Then we're going to look for a spread of fours to spread across Eastern Europe and Bulgaria, also coming across Bosnia, going as far north as Slovakia, and over to the west, a spread going down to North Africa. And that's already kind of showing right now. We've got movement down at the Canaries and movement in Portugal at the Strait of Gibraltar. So it looks like we're gearing up for movement to spread. And uh, South America, United States, Mexico. This is where we watch. And if you're over in Japan, I didn't even really get a touch on you much other than to say the storm clouds are on the horizon. Don't ignore what's coming your way with the volcanoes erupting and the big earthquakes to your south. We're looking for sixes, mid-range sixes, to start coming in. And once we get in here into Japan, it may take a slight step down into upper five. May. I stress may because this could go way up from beyond where I'm looking right now. I may have to get back on and readdress magnitudes and take everything up by a magnitude in each location. Well, not each location, but a multitude of locations that we talked about. We might have to go up in magnitudes by a half magnitude to a full magnitude at each spot. So if we're looking for 6s, we might need to look for 6.5s. If we're looking for 5s, we might need to look for 5.5s. I hate to break it to you guys, but it looks like it's going to be a little bigger. As if we need anything more. We have not seen any new deep quakes. There was one that popped off on Alamax. I don't know where it went, but they don't have it on anymore. So uh, maybe they'll put it on. Maybe they won't. It was reported next here to Tonga at a deep 200 or more km deep. 
and 4.7 is where it came in, and then it just, I don't know, it's gone. Or they haven't reported it yet, that might also be the case. So if you see a new deep earthquake pop off here, you'll know what it is. That's the one that I'm talking about now. Anything else going on, please, guys, let me know. If you feel an earthquake, uh, it, it appears that they're not doing a good job of reporting all the quakes. So if you feel an earthquake, please let us know and um, try and record if you can, if you have the time to record. Try to record it. If you are feeling it, try to grab that phone or at least have it somewhere nearby where you can at least, once you're underneath the table or desk, if it's going on for a sec few seconds, you can record it and uh, show us. Or, uh, you know, make a first-hand report in chat if you do feel it, and that will help us somewhat in understanding how big of an intensity that is going on at the location, because... I'm just not trusting these magnitudes. There, there's just something funny going on with the agencies and the way they're doing this right now, guys. Um, I don't know if it's just to try and calm the public or keep everybody whatever, or I don't know if it's try to, you know, counter earthquake forecasting. I, I, you know, I gotta think that they may be trying to do that too. We don't know, so we'll wait and see. Time now: 3:45 a.m. Central Time on the 10th of September. This is. National Preparedness Month here in the United States, and I'm extending that internationally. It is International Preparedness Month. It is your time, wherever you are, to develop an emergency plan and an emergency kit. Now, the kit is just something that should just be basics. So you'll think of good ideas to put into your emergency kit for the first day of a disaster. Don't overkill. Most of the stuff you already have around your house. And if you're going to do food and water, I would skip the meals ready to eat and the canned goods and all that stuff and go with something lightweight, high energy that will get you through the first day. Now, for long-term supplies, of course, you need the other long-term supplies. But uh, we're only talking about the disaster on day one. You need to have a place to go in case you get displaced from your residence or abode of any kind. Um... I would recommend maybe just sourcing out campgrounds and other things that are nearby but somewhat far away from your own destination, somewhere where you can walk or catch a ride to. Now again, a campground, most people don't think about it, low cost, usually has uh, you know, some kind of uh, toilet facilities and water of some kind, and usually a place to uh, build a fire and those kind of things to cook with and you're kind of away from people normally. Most people don't think about that. It's low cost and it's usually easy to get to as a rally point and you can tell your friends and family if you need to get a hold of me, if there's ever a disaster, you point them to that place. Whether it's a campground, uh, state parks can be a little bit hairy, so you might want to think about private campgrounds or private um, RV parks and those kind of things because state parks can go into disaster declaration and they shut them all down and close the gates. So just think about those things ahead of time. If you're in any country, you can make those kind of plans. Also, friends, family, loved ones, co-workers, you can talk to them and you can strike up deals with them now that if anything happens, we'll take care of you, you take care of me kind of thing. And you can get a partnership with other people who can prepare as well. So make those plans now. The emergency kit is, again, something that you keep and you can use it for anything from severe weather to having to evacuate for a fire or a flood or, of course, if an earthquake strikes. You have all the stuff in it that you need. The change of clothes, set of shoes, flashlight, batteries, ID, extra set of keys for your car, your house, maybe if you have it, extra money. I don't know. Most people don't have that, so you could probably whatever on that. But um, the other things you can do, and they don't cost anything, which is just the change of clothes, set of shoes, the food that you might already have that's prepackaged, that you can put that aside and be ready, and you'll be way better off than all the people who just refuse to plan or listen or do any of that. They're like, I'll just deal with it when it comes. Yeah, well, they're the person that's standing outside. You know, here's something else, too, and I use this example all the time, but I want you to really think about it. Earthquake strikes, middle of the night, you're asleep. Now, either you're in your PJs or less, most likely, and um, some people sleep in their clothes, but most people don't. Let's just be frank. Even kids are in their PJs, right? So... Um, you wake up in the middle of the night and an earthquake's hitting, you hear things breaking on the floor or something. Well, that's broken things on the floor. Do you have a set of slippers with a good hard bottom on them or do you have a set of shoes that are set by the side of the bed? Something so basic that could really save you if something goes down. 
because you're going to slip those on and then you're out the door. You're not running across a bed of glass trying to find your flashlight and you know where your flashlight is because, again, the power is out. It's the middle of the night. It's dark. Uh, you know where your emergency kit is. You could probably feel along a wall and find it if you know where the kit is as opposed to trying to go to a drawer or a cabinet and fumble around when it's all knocked around from an earthquake. Right? Things that you can do now that make a difference. The other thing you can do, go around your house. For instance, in your kitchen. This is just something most people don't think about. I didn't even think about it until, what, three months ago. And I've been doing this eight years. Um, and, I, and I'm in construction. I've done a lot of construction. I just never thought about it. Refrigerators in your kitchen. Now, this happened in the Hawaii earthquake. There's all kinds of videos that came out during the Hawaii earthquake. It was a 6.9 that hit in Hawaii as the magma punched up through the surface and created fissure 8. When that 6.9 hit, the whole island shook, and the areas nearby, up near Hilo, people really got shook up hard uh, by that near 7.0 earthquake. Now, people were recording the video uh, in video because it was a good 30, 45 second long, maybe even a minute long earthquake. And one person was cooking in their house. They had their kitchen going. They had boiling water on the stove. Um, it would look like it was an electric stove, so that was, I guess, the only good thing. It wasn't gas. But um, the other person who was recording came into the kitchen, and things were still shaking, and the water splashing out of the thing. The pots were knocked over. And the woman who was cooking, she isn't taking care of the pots and all that splashing stuff going around everywhere. She's over with both hands up on the refrigerator, keeping it in place, with all the weight of her body on it and the thing is still moving and it's almost falling over on her and i'm thinking god she's a small lady you know again this like some hawaiian lady and she's up there with her trying to hold it but your refrigerator top heavy full of things sometimes or even if not top heavy easily moved yeah your most refrigerators easily move unless you bracket them down or if you strap them in on the back so what you can use is something like a bungee cord or a very um, strong rope of some kind and you can screw it in on the back of the fridge where they do have these like little hooks that you can um, notch in on and then just put into the stud of the wall and then you can still scoot out your fridge if you need to and the rope will stretch and you can just you know unhook it with your hand or you keep it in there and it just is always in there but you could put it in just for earthquake time same for latches on your cabinets they make these interior uh, kid safe latches for kid proofing your house and they're kind of a pain in the butt but you put them in on the inside of the cabinet and they're maybe like two bucks a piece they're made out of plastic and they snap well if an earthquake hits guess what even if it's a big quake this it'll hold on that uh, lateral motion and all your cups and all your dishes won't fall out of your cabinets like you see in all these earthquake videos when stuff comes flying out of your cabinets with just a little child safe latch and it fits on the inside you don't even have to see it and if it's a pain in the butt you take it off after earthquake time it just screws in little things you can do the set of shoes the latches on the cabinets the the rope on the back of the fridge or some you know even strong fishing line might do it a few hundred pound fishing line right uh, for deep sea fishing but i mean these kind of things can be done saying oh mirrors and uh, other breakable things on the wall deep sea fishing line guys deep sea i saw this in a video i was like oh my god yeah i didn't even think of that the guy was like okay this deep sea fishing line will hold a 200 pound fish or more and this mirror is only 50 pounds or this picture that's got a glass surface on it is only five pounds not even and if it falls it's going to shatter all over the floor so I put this clear fishing line on the back here, you see, and I screwed it into the studs. So now if it falls, and it would be a good thing to have too if you have kids, they won't knock a mirror off the wall anymore, right? They don't have to worry about the kid knocking the mirror or climbing up and pushing it over with a, a pet or those kind of things. I just didn't even realize. Such a genius idea. And it's clear too. I mean, it's that high textile uh, fishing line. You don't even see it. And it just fits on the back. Such genius ideas. So you guys can think about these things ahead of time. I'm not trying to lecture you too hard. But this is the time where we call go time. So I am going to take the time to tell you this. What else are we going to do? Would you rather me just be quiet and you guys can think of the ideas? Right? The, the fishing line. No, I mean, you never think of that, right? Okay, I guess a fisherman might, but that's about it. Time now, 3.52. We'll just call it 4 a.m. basically right now, Central Time. I'll be back on, let's put it at 5 a.m. Central Time. That'll give me an hour to recover my voice. 
The earthquake down in Chile has been elevated back up to 5.1. So we are definitely dealing in the five-ish range down in Chile. That's no surprise. The equal spread of force across South America is now self-evident with a 5.2 to the north and a 5.1 to the south. Be on watch. Be prepared. Do not be scared. You have no reason to be anymore. It's like watching the weather. You can be weather prepared. You can watch the storms blow across the region or watching the seismic pressure blow across these regions. So if you live downstream from where one of these quakes are, Downstream, one more time, look at the arrows. Look at the arrows and look which way they point. This is the way the overall force flows. So if you live downstream from which way the arrows point, be on the watch. It's that simple. I live on the arrows. I'm on watch right now. I live in the New Madrid seismic zone. The only good news I've got for the people here in the Missouri region is these people, Oklahoma, Kansas, Texas, have stepped in with 520 thousand five hundred twenty six thousand five twenty six um drill points just in oklahoma alone not counting kansas texas or colorado we're talking millions of drill points across these four states well that's now stepped in and that kind of abbreviates our pressure a little bit it'll take off the force and we get the leftovers now over to the east but just in case i'm wrong or there's more force coming in i have my plans dusted off and I have my backpack packed, and it's out and ready to go, just in case. And if I'm taking precautions to, you know, for precautions in case I'm wrong, what does that mean you should do? Right? I mean, you're, should you ignore it? I, I don't know. I don't know if that's such a good idea. And just because the mainstream media is not talking about it, guys, the mainstream media is not going to talk about it unless they're paid to talk about it or unless they're going to get paid to talk about it. Plain and simple. Have a good one. I'll be back one hour from now, 5 a.m. Central Time. You have time to share the streams, whether you're on YouTube or you're on Twitch. You have time to save a life. Somebody's life could be saved by knowing that earthquakes are coming their way. To be ignorant of this is like being ignorant of a large hurricane heading your direction. Everybody's watching Hurricane Florence on the east coast of the United States. Well, let's watch this seismic storm spread out. You should be just as concerned about this as you are about a storm on the east coast of the United States, or even more. Have a plan, and be prepared. Peace out.